right? So the firmware, the firmware means the software that you need to uh, operate a particular computing device. Uh, for example, if you take a printer, right? You have to tell the printer like how to print something. So that is what we call firmware. Let's move to the next one then. Then we have liveware. We call uh, the persons who actually use uh, the system, right? So this is what we call, uh, we call liveware. So the last one under this, we will discuss live. Right. We can say the people or the users who uses the computers. People users of the computers are called live there right example computer application assistant right or uh, people like software hardware engineers and network administration. So this is called liveware. There are different people responsible working with the computer at different levels. So those are commonly called Live Basically, we can say the persons who, you know, <clears throat> work. So we can, you know, take them as live. Right. Okay. Now, with that part, we discussed the basics of uh, so hardware, software, and also uh, live. Now the next one, we are going to look at how the data processing happens. Basically, we can say data processing activity. So let's talk about these activities, right? We can say data processing activities as a subtopic, right? Uh, 
there are several uh, steps are there. Right? There are several steps. So the first one is data gathering. Which means you collect whatever the data that you need to do something. Second one, data validation. Now, when you gather data, sometimes the data might be incorrect. Like, for example, let's say I want to get a person's age. We know the valid range of data for age is like between zero to 120. You can have like negative values, not hopefully more than, uh, you know, 120 or as well. There should be a, you know, valid data limit. So you have to validate the data. So that is a second step. Third one, data processing, which means uh, you collect data for some purpose. We need to convert the data into information, which means we have to change whatever collected. So that comes under data processing. And then we have data output, right? So that's hopefully um, will be some kind of information that you might get. And the next one is data storage. You need to store this data, right? Take down these steps. Now we'll let's start with data gathering part, right? The first part we'll look at with data gathering part. So under the data gathering, we are going to talk about two ways. We know that traditionally, we actually use manually collect the data. We have written in books, or papers, now things have changed. Now we have computers, right? Which means you can automate it like Google Forms. Right? So let's talk about data gathering. Right? There are two methods or techniques, right? First one, manual. Second one, semi-automated. That means and automated. Right now, we have automated methods as well, right? Automatically, you know, the system will, uh, you know, collect the data. So data gathering happens in the automated fashion nowadays. Now, for example, when you are using a mobile phone, when you go here and there, everything is recorded with, for example, GPS, right? If your parents want to know like where you are, they can do it by using a simple software. So this is because it automatically gathers your data. Whenever you connect to the internet, right? It can store your location information. And anybody can know where you are, which is actually one of the issues now we are going to face with all these technologies. We are going to have issues with our privacies. 
for example google knows what you would like to eat what you like to go what kind of a person you are what kind of a movies you are watching what kind of games that you are playing everything is recorded so google knows about everything about you right if needed uh, google can actually suggest a partner for you as well because he knows everything about you so it's because of automated data collection every day whatever we do whatever wherever we go uh, in day to day activities everything is recorded data is recorded in any way with the uh, mobile right they know you know better than sometimes ourselves they know what we want to do when we woke up for example so remember that so having said that let's uh, talk about more details about the data gathering right now uh, in this one we are going to look at uh, more on this now for example when we have a manual data gathering you can do lot of ways let's say we are going to develop a system you have done this early as well how do you collect the data so what are the ways you have right in manual data collections interviews yes interviews yes through the internet we can take yes but other than that let's say you want to do a uh, develop a uh, a uh, uh, um, computer system for a library in the school how do you collect the data that you need yes remember we discussed these things earlier so you can observe you can observe and see how people interact that is one way of data gathering you can have interview with a limited number of uh, you know people like uh, top management then you can use questionnaires like if you want to like get information for majority of the users for example live users you can use questionnaires and then you have a source data like you have documents that uh, you can use these to uh, manual data collection right now um sometimes when you want to like no clue at all you can use observation as a beginning point and then using uh, interviews you can take uh, a lot of data on on this one right and then when you say want to get people opinion especially anonymously right you can use questionnaires right and then you can use uh, you know systems uh for uh getting the requirements of the system right so that is actually uh you know manual data collection right so let's take down so in manual data collection we can say that let's start with the manual one first we'll write down manual uh data gathering right so the manual means um data 
can be collected collected through right, observations interviews questionnaires and source documents so these are the some of the way that you can actually get the uh, the details and the next one is especially uh, when you cannot get the data from individuals, right? Then we can do observation. Right? So we can say that the so observation can be used when data cannot be collected by contacting individuals. Let's say the lecturers are quite uh, BC, so sometimes you cannot contact them, right? Because uh, if the individuals are quite of BC, then uh, you can use uh, with the observation. can be collected through interviews, through interviews from several persons. Right. However, interviews require more time and effort, right? Interviews require more time and effort. That I hope you can understand. Then we can have questionnaires. Can use questionnaire. Can be used. You can use questionnaires asking questions and getting answers. Questions can be used to gather data from an, uh, anonymous individuals. Data from a large number of, we'll say like that, from a large number of anonymous individuals.
Then finally, source documents. can be used to assemble the requirement right those documents can be used to assemble or gather the requirements of a system so this is called manual, you know, data gathering. Now, a few things we have discussed, right? Uh, we can, through observation, we can take interviews, questionnaires, and then we talk about source documents. And we can say source documents. Okay, so that's about manual data gathering. Now let's look at how the automated one or semi-automated ones right so let's start with the semi-automated and automated ones Right. So we can say the next one. In semi automated. Right. With uh, the today's development of like, uh, you know, ICT technologies. With ICT and all, we have a lot of automated method, right? So let's look at some examples. Right? So under the examples, let's take down. Right, we can see uh, some examples optical mark reader, or in short, we will say OMR. Is used to mark the Question papers automatically. Question papers marks papers automatically.
right? And the next one, optical character recognition. optical mark reader right so uh, for example in your examinations normally uh, your marks your answers are automatically read right so answer sheets are there now, for example, we will have answer sheets, right? And then there are some scanners. So you can use to scan it. And then we have a software which can recognize, you know, your answers, right? That is possible right automatically so the data is automatic now similarly we have another thing which we call ocr which we call optical character recognition now sometimes your written documents it could be your hand written documents or printed documents sometimes we need to digitize it the technology actually that we have used is called Optical character recognition o OCR. Right? Optical character recognition OCR. So this OCR means it recognizes these printed ones or handwritten ones automatically. So this could be even done with your mobile phone. There are apps if you search for OCR, right? Which will automatic automatically recognize the printed characters right so that's what will happen so ocrs are there are different types of ocr devices are available sometimes we can go to a library and then using a handheld very small device you can uh, you know uh, record whatever you want right and sometimes our handwritten characters, it can be recognized, right? So this is actually shows you like what happens there, right? So there are devices um, and then a, the de devices which actually convert this into OCR. Right, so that's about um, optical character recognition. So there are many software modules are available. Nowadays, the technology is available to recognize uh, the text we call optical character recognition. Again, the data gathering is automated. Right, the next one. We can use in banks, we have uh, the check readers, we call MICR, right? So the MICR also uh, a, a way of collecting data automatically, right? So the next one that we are going to discuss is called magnetic. Ink character recognition, or in said MICR, we call it MICR. Automatically, 
detects the check number in banking operation. So this will ease the burden, otherwise this will be manual, right? Magnetic in character recognition, OS MICR. So usually, if you look at the check, there are o -A -O -A M I C R, uh, you know, code is there. There's a number, check number that you can actually recognize, right? If you look at a checkbook and check, so there should be a number that we need to know the check number. So there are some readers, check readers. If you visit to uh, banks, you can see they use some devices sometimes to automatically read this. They're not doing this in uh, manually, but in some places, yes, they are doing it still. But the idea is automatically recognize, right? These uh, MICR codes. And it's quite faster compared to our manual system. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, ATM cards. Now, I think you have seen when you go to uh, automated teller machine and when you want to, let's say, withdraw money, right? you go there, you input the PIN number, you uh, input whatever the amount that you want to withdraw. If you have enough money, then you will get the data <coughs> and you get the money, for example. Yes, again, automated. So the next one, we can say, magnetic tape readers. Can automatically detects the information on credit so when you go shopping usually they can get the details of our, our credit card they can charge you Then we will have barcode readers. So especially if you go to computerized shop, right? All the goods that you take, you will see. We say barcode reader.
right? Barcode read identify the information on the barcode. So what is a barcode? Right? If you look at right your data or your even a book, just look at one of the books you have, you might see this. Some vertical lines like this and with a small code. So this is what we call the barcode. And then what we need is reader. Right? So the usually you might have seen uh, this kind of a device, especially in shops, you can cite this. Again, data collection is automated, right? It's actually simply reads the code, but automatically, right? We don't have to manually type it. Some places you might see, which is time consuming one. We can do a better job. Right, last one. Next one. We have sensors, right? Last one we call sensors. We have proximity sensors. When you're closing to something, we can do something. You can write down sensors. When a mobile device sensors, when a mobile device, so let's see. the mobile phone is picked up its various sensors Right. When a mobile phone is picked up, its various sensors automatically collects information. Let's have some examples. Fingerprint. EPS. Barometer.
speed detector. So there are a lot of sensors nowadays you can see here and there, which automatically collect some information. 